Okay. Well, hopefully that, yes, sir. Well, that's a good point. That depends. Sometimes you can use looking them in the eye to your advantage. If you have one that's a little wild and there's a bunch of gentle cattle in and you, you look at it with your eyes, you can send them out by you. So I, I agree with that and I, I forget it because I think I just naturally do it. I've never really thought about that too much until here lately. But you can use your eye, your chest, and you can put a lot of pressure on an animal that's real sensitive like you're talking about. You can stop movement or you can create movement. So that's a very good point, and I think it's, uh, you know, just turning your head back in an alley, sometimes those cattle will come by you. I, I've seen this all my life in the horse world. You'll see people that they're trying to get their horse to go across the creek. And they're looking down, and they're looking down, and, and they're kicking their horse, and they don't really want him to go anyway, but they're looking down. And I'll say, why don't you look up at the sky, or up at the horizon. As soon as they look up, their horse goes right across. I, there's such subtle movements that we make with these cattle that, that really create problems or good. We were weighing cattle, my wife and kids and I, we had a big yearling deal, and we were weighing cattle in, and my, my kids, my two kids and I were horseback, and we were pulling cattle out of the pen, and, and my wife and the owner of the cattle were at the scale, and he was running the gate, and my wife was weighing cattle. And we had a lot of cattle to weigh, and it was a busy day, and this fella, he was a big operator. And we're, we're getting along just fine. And my kids are doing great. And we're working. Everything's going great. They're coming down this hill. And they're going right on the scale. He gets a phone call. And I see him up there. And he's talking. And he's ticked off. And, and uh, pretty soon the cattle won't work. And we're having to fight these cattle up. And we're, we're really having trouble. And I said, what the hell's wrong? And my daughter was up there and heard it. She says, well, Fred's mad. Somebody called him and called him, and they he'd bought a real expensive bull, and they put him in a pen, and he got electrocuted, and they killed his expensive bull, and he was ticked off. And just Fred's demeanor, just him being angry, those cattle wouldn't go by him anymore. So you're right on, yeah. But we well, can use it to advantage or not. Either way, that's I really think that. I I uh, there's a real good website, and I don't know if any of you have heard of Bud Williams. He he's uh. He's an interesting man, I'll say, and he's, uh, I think he's brilliant, but he's really hard to learn from sometimes. He, he's really hard on people sometimes, especially me. I don't know why he doesn't, he's so mean to me, but anyway. So I, I don't learn much from him one-on-one, -on -one, or I do learn a lot, but it's really hard. Uh, now I know how those cattle feel. <laughs> but he's got a website right now, and uh, it's called, it's a stockmanship, just stockmanship, and it's a subscription deal. And he talks about marketing and cattle handling. And I really recommend it. And uh, somebody asked a question there the other day about looking cattle in the eye. And he said, he, you got to look at cattle, but don't look them directly in the eye or be too aggressive. And uh, so, you're, good point. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? This looks like a kind of a nice place right here. This is a good place to work, boys. I think you did good. So anyway, well, I don't know if I did you any good out here or not, but uh, remember, it's not all about less pressure. It's about more pressure at the right time and learning how to do it. And you can do it. You can make a lot of difference with the eye or whatever. You can put a lot of pressure on these animals without doing a whole lot of physical. The other thing I think we got to keep in mind, and I'll quit with this, is when we put pressure on these animals, they got to have somewhere to go with it. If they don't have anywhere to go with it, that's when they really get panicked. And that's when they get on a fight, they quit working, or they balk, or they get real stressed and their immune system shuts down. So I'm all for pressure. Pressure is great. Just make sure that animal has somewhere to go with it. And that's that deal about stepping back. Put the pressure on if they don't have anywhere to go or can't figure it out. Step back, start again. Yep, and stay safe. That's, there's not one animal 
in this, this yard or in this country that's worth more than any, any one human's finger, little finger. And safety is we, the better we get, the more chances we take. And that's when you really, people really get hurt. And I've had a lot of friends that aren't cowboys anymore. They either can't or they, they've hurt themselves. So be safe and, and really think about our industry. It's a great industry and I'm really proud to be a part of it. So proud to be here today. Thank you. Especially when you're, you know, like pulling cattle out of a pen and going to a, to a truck or something, a, a, a pen of fats, you know, they, they'll split those cattle up quite a bit. And I, I think if you just, if you pull your cattle right and you can keep that pressure on and keep them together, but right. some are going to slow down. And sometimes, of course, we're forced to, to put blocking gates up because we've got fellow ahead of them. Yeah. So then, of course, Joe's coming with his bunch. So he stopped at the cross gate and then he's got a, he might be quite a ways back. Yep. Trying to get the part ones to come. Yep. You know. Well, I can start cattle from the back, a lot of cattle, but, and I'm. But in that, actually, but the same thing too. We might have a blocking gate here, but the cattle will come around the corner. Joe might be on this side of the corner over here, but the front of that cattle should be around the corner up here, and they can't even see what's happening at the back. Yeah, but these cattle at the back, they'll push through those cattle. I suppose. They'll, if you get enough pressure back here, they're going to push through them. Yeah. Yep. That's what you got to work at, is getting these cattle that are closest to you. To get them to move. First. They, it's a domino. It's like a domino. These cattle back here, and they just keep pushing, and that, and that pressure will take them, just like cattle going to water. Yeah. You know, and, and like when you wean calves, when they get to walking the fences, you got some pulling up here. This guy up here pulling might want to stop, but these guys back here are pushing him, and so he can't stop, and that's why they walk for three days. You got this pulling and pushing motion. So we just got to add the pushing motion in. Yep. Yeah, as long as you're more stubborn, the ones aren't the leaders. That's right. <laughs> But, you know, in an alley, you can put enough pressure on. We, we, uh, the other day we were moving some cattle, and we had a bull that was holding cattle up. At the, you've seen them when they yeah. stop you at a gate. Yeah. And uh, he was really good. He could stop them damn cows. But we, my wife and I, we, got, we just kept putting pressure, and pretty soon he just got frustrated and went with them. He couldn't stop us anymore. Yeah. So, I don't know. Those are hard questions you're asking. Certain, day, certain types of weather, sunny days are worse than cloudy days. Yep. Yep. I think sometimes the moon makes a difference. Oh, Who knows? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I don't know if the moon makes a difference to the cattle or the people. people. Well, I know. <laughs> pressure, pressure changes that come in too make sure. a difference. I think so. I, you know. Yeah, I think there's a lot, but we can't change the moon, and we can't. I can't change my wife, so I'll well, just no. keep going with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. in an auction ring is they're forced to come from the right outside like it is right here and then they come in and they got to make a corner and come into an area that's under the roof quite a bit darker than it is here. yes but they're forced to come into a shadow on the edge of the building come make the corner and then go into a brightly lit sales sale ring. ring with noise and you people know. and movement and yeah it's and that's tough we, that's, we cur consistently have a chronic problem making that bend yep some cattle will zip around there like a joe dam the next bunch one at a time or something like yep. that you know they just cook i know they Put more heat on at the back. Well, you know, and of course, like I say, we we always try to use blocking gates for the reason that if you a end up in a wreck or b have other trouble, you're forced to yeah. at least keep them separate. But then, of course, it stops production. Yeah. And the whole matter of timing makes a big difference. Big too. difference. And if you set a block gate, at least you can get up in the middle or at the front and get them started yeah, again, and then just walk right down along them. That's what I would do if you get it like with 130 head. Get somebody to start from the front get them started and then just walk right down those cattle and they'll come by and it'll yeah. keep that flow going. Yeah. 